CTE seems to be a pretty popular subject these days. How do you feel about the potential health hazards of football and you playing as long as you did? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know CTE, they can't find it at this point until after you're already passed on. Right. But have you noticed any uh, abnormally abnormal challenges that you think you may not have dealt with personally? I can't honestly say I football? have. No, I can't honestly say I have. Not not as of now, I mean. Right. But it don't mean that it ain't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So as of now, no. Um, and, and as far as CTE, I mean, I I, I think I think it's, it is it is – absolutely important that the game changes got to you know it, it's, it's not going to be football here in a second because it's it's a big business and either either the players are going to sign waivers saying that they won't you know they understand the, the risk of it or football is going to be over it's all you can do you know what I'm saying because if, if they want to it's a big business and what, what what the players don't understand is they run the show and, and they think they think they think the the the, the organizations do no, the players run. The, if they don't have the players, they're not gonna get the following. The football, if football, if the football is bad, nobody's gonna watch. That's true. <laughs> and nobody watches. You have no game. Right. So, with, with that respect, the players are in control of of everything. They just need to make sure that you know what they're signing is the right thing for them, and. It, it, it's one of those things. It's going to be, I'm pretty sure, in the next collective bargain agreement, as far as NFL, that's going to be the biggest thing. Like, we we going to need you guys to sign waivers, saying that you understand that you can die from it, and we won't get sued on the end, on the well, back end I, I of mean, it. that makes perfect sense. They should have done that a long time ago to cover their self, in my opinion. I mean, because football, you know, you play as long as you have, you, you, you will probably vouch for this, but it's a brutal sport. Absolutely. Especially as a running back, you know, in college, I said you had like a thousand some carries. That's mm -hmm. just college. Yeah. You know, not counting high school. I mean, obviously, it wasn't the extent of college and the pros mm -hmm. and the CFL. And then you went on the CFL and took a beat and took a beat and took a beat and took a beat. I mean, it is strenuous on your body, I can imagine. And if you're not in that grind taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll tell myself here a little bit. I used to be a professional wrestler. And uh, about. A year and a half, two years ago, I got the itch to want to do it again. So I went and got in the ring. I was going to work out a little bit, see if I still had it, you know, before I went out and had a show. And uh, I wasn't ready. I hadn't been taking care of myself. And two things happened uh, that that session uh, in particular. Uh, one, dude threw me into the corner. I went running to the corner, just the regular old jog. And my knee said, nope, sorry, we're not going that way. <laughs> So I said, oh, and I caught myself. I could have got hurt bad. I was like, okay, whatever. And then a little bit later, I took a clothesline, and I hit the mat in my, and, you know, you're supposed to tuck your head in. Well, I tucked, but I, I thought I tucked, but my, my body was uh, loose because I hadn't went through those motions in so long. So my head kind of rocked back, and I went loopy for a little while. Um, I've, you know, you got some people out there that will fuss and complain about some of the money that these uh, football players make. I think that they should be paid more than these basketball, than these hmm. baseball players, because you know, you know, even though basketball could be intense, you know, playing, running, you know, stretching, all this good and that, you know, football is, it's, it's brutal, man. It is, and, and that, that's, that's the whole thing. Like, you know, everybody else has guaranteed contracts except football. Yeah, what's and up? The reason being is that I, it, it's, it's a. They they give you they they make it an entrepreneurial type of an experience, entrepreneurial. You, you know you have a show. When you're an entrepreneur, you if you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah, right. When you got some guaranteed money, if you work, you you know it doesn't matter if you work or not. You still going you still gonna eat. Yeah. You know what I mean. Regardless, but when you know if you don't go out and work, you're not gonna eat. The intensity goes up. The 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 the, the wherewithal of having. Um, understanding of what it is, what what's going on goes up. You know, there's there's no lack that you 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 extend yourself more. You just do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do if you were you just getting fed. You don't in say, hey, I'm gonna make sure I'm ready because I'm not gonna go out here and hurt myself and not be able to provide for my family. That's I mean, it. I'm not I'm not trying to lose what's paying me to to feed my family. Exactly. And, and they make it entrepreneurial, so it, it turns it turns a, a athlete entrepreneurial, understanding that. You know, if I don't work, I don't eat. But it's not entrepreneurial at all. 
you know what I mean? It's not entrepreneurial at all because um, you still you still have to. I mean, I can't say it's not because it truly is entrepreneurial. Because if you don't if you don't perform, somebody else is gonna get in there and do it. They gonna be an Avon come in and take your starting job. Uh, absolutely, will happen every time. If, if if you don't if you don't work, you don't you know what I mean? Somebody will come and do it. Somebody will come and do it. So it that I think that's what makes the game so much so much better than than. Because if you think about it, when does basketball get good? Playoffs. About it. Because in the playoffs, and not it's, even it's the whole playoffs, man. Not even the whole playoffs. Or honestly, the the last two rounds usually is is what I really get into it. But but if you think about it, during the playoffs, it's do or die. Right. So anytime it's do or die, the intensity goes up. Oh, and recent, in football, everything is do or die. Everything all season. The long. whole. That's why football is such a, so entertaining to watch because if you don't perform. Week in, week out. You will lose your job because nothing is guaranteed except the money that you get guaranteed. And and, and, unless, and unless you're making $50 million guaranteed, <laughs> you're going hard mm-hmm. every chance you get. Uh, I I can imagine the uh, some of the uh, uh, feelings uh, in Morgantown because last year we had Rush Shell, Justin Crawford, Crawford uh, Kennedy McCoy, Martel Petaway all running the ball. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard it for years, next man up. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy gets banged up, this guy comes in. Well, Russell Shell's gone, but we still got Kennedy McCoy, um, Justin Crawford, and Martel Petaway. And each one of those guys performed when it was their turn last year, mm-hmm. which is good because, like we was talking about with the competition, you know, Crawford's going to go out there hitting hard because he's going to be like, well, if I don't get such and such, then... Somebody, McCoy's going to take my reps. Gonna come get it. <laughs> Somebody's going to come get it. It's, it's always good to have competition. Right, it really is. Um, now that we're talking a little bit about the current program in Morgantown, I uh, don't like talking bad about anybody, and that's not what I'm doing, um, but I want to get your take on the whole Marcus Sims situation. Um, potentially breakout star for the Mountaineers this year. Just received a second DLI in the last few months. What do you think is the appropriate course of action uh, for something like that? I've heard people on the internet, they've been harping saying to kick him off the team, suspending three games. Um, I will, I'll get your answer, then I'll tell you how I feel about the situation. The appropriate situation is, is really to see what his teammates say. If they want him back, they'll take him back. If they don't want him back, he should be gone. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if if the players can deal with it, it doesn't really matter to anybody else. Because anybody Part of my else language, playing, but the hell with y'all. It ain't about at, y'all. At the end of the day, right? If the players are like, look, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. But if, if if as a as a player, and they're like, look, man, I'm tired of this. He too much. He doing too much. He got to go. But if if the players is cool with it, and they're saying, look. They'll, you know, if they if they gonna let him come back, we'll take him. And then so be it. I like that. I like that answer. It's nice to get a player's perspective from that, because I've been hearing people bark on the internet doing this and doing that. Um, I know Dana come out and said he's suspending him for the first game, which is a great step, uh, and said that he has to go through the motions to get back right. It could potentially be more on the suspension. But these these jokers out here saying this, kick him off the team and whatnot. I like what you said. You know, ask the players. I mean, who who are they to sit there and say kick this kid off the team? A fan. A fan. You know, that ain't that ain't one no. run one sprint. <laughs> right. That ain't that ain't lift one weight. Yeah. That ain't sit in one meeting. Right. That ain't wake up one time at five a.m. to go do none of that. You know, the, it just goes back to what we was talking about about wanting it. People make mistakes. You know, you yeah. mentioned yourself when you was in uh, Miami. You made some mistakes. Absolutely. Um. You know, I think it would be a horrible idea to kick him off the team just for the simple fact. If you was to do that, probably at least eight times out of ten, you're going to mess that kid's head up. He's going to be in his own head the rest but of his life. But you know what? That's, that's his fault. You it know, is. That, you, you, but you got to be real. held accountable for your actions. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. Right. I, me personally, the second DUI offense, if I was coach, I'd be like, hey, three games, uh, come to practice every day, do what you're supposed to do, we'll go from there. Um but that's just me, you know. Like you said, I'm not, you know, running him sprints. I'm not, right. you know, uh, with with the guy every day. 
but like you like you said, I mean, it was a decision he made. Right. Um, and a lot of uh, there's not a lot of accountability um, mm -hmm. with the youth these days. I've I've found, um, which is something that it's it's hard to teach how to teach accountability. Right. It's something that you just. I mean, I got accountability just for the simple fact when I was growing up, if I wasn't acting right, Granny let me know I wasn't acting right. right. You know what I, mean? like, oh, I ain't going to do that again. You're going to feel it. Right. But, you know, it's not the same like it used to be. So there, you got to find different ways to, uh, uh, you know, uh, teach these people. And I like what you said because if, uh, let's use uh, um, Corral White, for example. He's in Morgantown right now. I don't know the situation, but say him and, Marcus Sam's buddies, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Corral might say, "Man, you shouldn't be doing that, man. You're gonna mess up your future and all this." Which that might get into his head and get him thinking, "Man, I shouldn't be messing right. up like that," you know. Um, but that's real cool to get your uh, perspective on that, man. I, I hope, well, well, I hope, I hope, well, things happen or good things happen to him. I hope he gets his his that's, situation that's right. Big, that's the, I mean, that's the biggest thing, man. You you want the best for the kid, but. You know, for me, if he was on my team, he did it twice. I'd be like, "Look, if you are you coming to practice? Are you doing what you? If you're not doing it, then you all you doing is you're selfish. You're not you, you're selfish. You're not doing anything that that's going to help out the team right now. All you doing is being selfish. Right. We all want to go out and drink. Get an Uber. They, I mean, they're everywhere now. So I mean, to, to for me, for me, I'm, I, you you have you. If if it, again you got to put money in the bank, and that's that's what I believe as a player and as a coach. If you got money in the bank, there's a lot more things you can do as opposed to a player that don't got no money in the bank. Now, obviously, you got one di one one D, uh, dui. The money the money in the bank is very slim. So for me to bring you back after that is 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 slim to none. I mean, unless I don't gotta, have a choice. You got to really show me you want it. Right. Yeah. And and again, for me, it will it'll fall on. If I was playing, and I'm like he did it twice, and I'm like, hold on, you you don't care about what's going on here. You care about more what's going on with yourself. Right. So what you need to do is go get yourself right. Right. Whatever that is, but you are gonna get it away from me and what I'm trying to do. Right. Because at the end of the day, you don't care about what we're trying to do. You care about what you're trying to do. So go ahead and fix yourself. And when you fix yourself, if if you fix yourself, then we'll talk. Then we'll talk. I like that. That's a good way to look at it, man. Uh, you know me as a fan, you know. Um, I like what I'm looking at in the, in the fall camp. You know, me as a fan, like, oh, he's all right. He's just being a kid. Let right. him play. He's all right. But it's it's not that cut and dry. It really is. I mean, if he don't want it, like you said, what's the point? And that's the that's the biggest thing. A lot of people they act like they want it because they got a lot of talent, but they don't work. They don't work like they want it. They they don't think like they want it. You know, what I mean, you 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 don't necessarily go into situations thinking you're gonna mess up. But you 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 know what's at stake. So if you know what's at stake, your decision should should affect you know what the future is. I've always thought, okay, I can't I can't do anything because they bring scouts and talk to regular students. So they're gonna ask regular students, what, what, you know, tell me about Avon Coburn. You know, and 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 mom, that's what I thought consciously all the time. So I'm like, I'm I, that's not something I want to do. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I made mistakes. I, I didn't get caught a lot of times, but at the same time. <laughs> he, said, he said, I didn't get caught. They can't see me. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It, it was one of those things, like, we all make mistakes. Yeah. But if you keep getting caught, you got to understand you're not very good at it. Well, that's what builds character, Avon. I mean, you got to learn from your mistakes. You have to. People's going to make mistakes. It's what you do after that mistake is what's right. important. If you repeat that mistake, then... I mean, that's a problem for Dummy? me. That's a problem for me. <laughs> Get your head right. Uh, while you were at WVU, you received your degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're a leader of Primerica Financial Services, mm -hmm. uh, based out of Charleston, West Virginia. What is that exactly, and what do you guys do? So basically what Primerica is, is a financial services company that, that leads with an educational approach. We want to we wanna teach, we want to take what Wall Street does, and bring it down to Main Street so everybody can understand what they're doing. Everybody can be successful. Okay. So to sum it up, you know, we we, we 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 pretty much make sure that everybody knows what's happening from a Wall Street wall uh, from a Wall Street perspective. So you the wolf of Wall Street then? 
I'm I'm, I'm the I'm a wolf of uh, let me what's the uh, Virginia Street in Charleston. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out there. Hey, that's all right, man. Yeah. If you guys are interested in that? Look him up, man. Uh, find out a little bit about that. Um, I got a question. Back in the day, you used to wear the uh, the mouthpiece that said "Chill, son." Mm-hmm. Where where'd that come from? How'd that start? It's funny you ask that because uh, you know, it, it, and, you, and you asked me earlier about my about my other business. So what what chill, son? Where it came from? I had a friend, good, my best friend, one of my best friends, Angel Estrada. <clears throat> uh, it was me. That, it was me. A head buster. Uh. He was a head buster. <laughs> so Angel Estrada, he he, him and his brothers, they would always say, "Chill, son." Chill, son. So then, you know, I had I actually stole the whole idea from uh, Phil Braxton. Uh, he was a receiver that we had back in the day. He was the first one to put something. He had like, "Don't sleep on his mouthpiece," and and then I was like, "All right, I'm gonna put something on my mouthpiece." I mean, I stole the idea. I mean, right. there's, there's really no ri- original ideas anymore. No, 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 you know no. what I mean? So I took it, but since I since I was you know a, a star and I was always seen. You know what I mean? He started it. He put it on there first. He put something on there first. Then I put Chill Sun on it. <laughs> so, so, and, and really, what 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 that has evolved to was one of our one of you know what my what my business that we created, um, pregame enterprise. It, it went from it went from a slang term to a term of 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 not necessarily endearment, but a term of of, of change. So basically, it went from a slang term. To something that can help people transform their lives. Um, so what we so what so where it went to, we 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 said pregame enterprise with a chill sun logo, and it was it, what it meant was transform yourself to inspire someone else. So what we did was we we took a, a slang word and turned it into something that can change people's lives. Hey, that's that's pretty good. That's that, that, mm-hmm. that marketing degree yeah. that Morgantown to get you, yeah. that to get you thinking. Yeah. I know uh, K.J. Myers, I don't know if you know K.J. personally, but he's got uh, something similar going on. He's um, low life culture. He's been pushing for mm-hmm. for years, and low life, lack of worries, uh, living in frivolous efforts is mm-hmm. the acronym. Uh, but I think that's cool, especially you know, in your case and his case, when you guys take your um, – your brand, if you will, mm-hmm. of your 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 uh, time playing football and giving back to the community, helping right. you know spread the word and and help the youth out. Like uh, you're working with the YMCA now, correct? Yep, correct. That's great, yeah. man. I mean, any chance, any any time I see a, a celebrity, um, especially athletes, giving back to the community and trying to help the youth, that's where it's at. Um, because, you know, I could go over to this kid and be like, all right, man, you got to straighten up, quit doing that, you know, mm-hmm. you do this, it'll help you out a lot better, okay? But if Avon Coburn comes over here and says, hey, come on, man, what are you doing? Let's, let's get this right, you know, right. he's going to take that in because, you know, you're Avon. Right, it's a different, it's a different, it's coming from a different, a different source. Right, and uh, that's, that's great. Mm-hmm. Every, every time I see, uh, you know, these, uh, these athletes giving back to the community, like John Cena, the professional wrestler. I can't remember the exact number, but he's done, I can't tell you how many Make-A-Wish Foundation mm-hmm. wishes, you know, where he goes and hangs out with the kid and does whatever the kid wants to do. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, God give you a platform for a reason. Absolutely. Make it make it best you can, you know what I mean? If you can give back, give back. I mean, I'm not telling you that... Hang yourself out to dry if you're an athlete or a celebrity or something, but you know, help help out a little bit. You, know you got I mean? to, you got to, you got to get back. You got to, you have to be because of the platform, like you said, the platform that you get. People know, people know, and you and, and hopefully you use it for the for the most positive things. Right. Um, and, and and that's that's the real reason why you know I, I took not was one of the real reasons why I took the job at the YMCA is because. You know, I, I never, I never really was able to go to the YMCA when I was growing up because it was on the other side of town. Um, but when, when you know, the the CEO of of the YMCA said, Avon, you know, when, when, you know what we do here, you know, we'll have somebody, we'll have somebody from the west side of Charleston, you know, talking to somebody from south from the South Hills of Charleston, and they would never, never really have a a, a time to. Uh, uh, no, not, they would never have an opportunity to communicate if it wasn't for the YMCA. And what the YMCA does is is allow these people that don't have very much to 
to actually scholarship them into to be around the, we have judges we have lawyers we have district attorneys we have you name it coming through the YMCA and Mr. and Mrs. Average, average American can can talk to these people without them being behind a desk without them having that they could be a judge but right now you're a man right like I don't I don't much care what you you know if you if you a judge and and you say something wrong to me I can slap you because you're a man. Right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you, I don't care if you're a judge or not, but you're not going to disrespect me. Right. So, but not saying anybody would do that, but what I'm saying is people have access to ask these judges questions. They wouldn't ordinarily have it unless they was probably standing in front of them for doing something wrong or suing somebody else. You know what I'm man, saying? I tried to tell a judge something one time. He told me to shut up. I, he's tore off. He, I had it tore off pieces. Man, you didn't got me flashing back now, Elon. Right. But you know, at the at the YMCA, I didn't have a YMCA, man. So didn't get, at the YMCA, I didn't get to go that day. Right. <laughs> you can actually, you you know, what what we allow people to do is we we actually give people opportunities to to come and enjoy the the programs that we have, the the gym that we have. But then at the same time, they get access to be around people they would they wouldn't necessarily ordinarily have an opportunity to be around. That is very cool. Because you know. Uh, I don't care what happens in America. You know, you got all these idiots in Charlottesville acting like fools. Uh, you know, you got the, um, you know, the idiots over in North Korea doing whatever they're wanting to be doing. There's always going to be sports. Yeah. I mean, and there's no better way to reach out to a child than through sports, in yeah. my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, some of the funnest times I have with my children is just messing around. Passing a football, doing a little kickball, mm -hmm. man. Me and my kids, I taught them. I taught them a little bit about kickball over the summer, and my youngest one, he's seven. In baseball, I explained to him, you don't stand in the baseline with somebody running because you get mowed down, mm -hmm. right? Well, I guess he didn't realize that that went for kickball too. <laughs> so old dad's kicking the ball, right? Bam! Man, I killed. I said, I'm running. I ran first base. I'm. I'm hanging out. Actually, I, I take it back. I, I got a single. I was sitting on first, and uh, somebody was up behind me, and they kicked it. And as soon as I did, I took off, and I was scooting. And here's Jonah just hanging out. And I, when I, I, by the time I seen he was in my line of path, and well, I couldn't stop. So I kind of just tried to jump and do a little push out of the way so I didn't hurt him. He jumped up. Why'd you run? Why'd you push me down for, it, Dad? I was like, so I didn't kill you, man. Right. But you know, sports. Um, yeah, they're competitive, mm -hmm. but it's great bonding. It really is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and most men, you know, what I mean, we, we're so physical. We don't yeah. we don't communicate as well as we would like, and we want we want to communicate with our kids, with our children. But the way we do it is physical. Yeah. We do we we can sit down and and watch TV and just be in the presence, and that'd be cool. You know, a woman they need words. They need they need to hear words. I ain't no good at words. I'm I'm getting better. I'm getting. I'm. I'm not very good either. I, I try. I, I'm not very good either. Usually, my words don't usually come until after the fact, and I'm like, "Crap! I should have said that." I should, yeah. Should, I could explain it better. That that's that's <laughs> normally how, how it works with most men. Like, man, I, I really wish I would have said this. Right. I should should have done that. Maybe next time. Yeah. You learn. You learn. Next time, I'll come around and I forgot. Uh, but anyway, you're uh, hanging out in Charleston. Um, and speaking of Charleston, you are now part of the Section 304 podcast. Absolutely. That is amazing. Uh, some great guys there. I've been following their stuff for the last couple of years. Um, how did you hook up with these guys? And ultimately, why did you decide to join the crew, if you will? Well, I really almost didn't have a choice because uh, <laughs> I, I, I recruited um, uh, one, of the, one of the owners of, of the 304 podcast. Um, I, he was actually working at a news station. And I said, man, you need to come work with me, be my marketing coordinator. So he's actually my marketing coordinator, and he was like, look, you need you need to come on my my podcast. I, a couple of radio stations wanted me to come on board and 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 do it, and and I haven't necessarily turned them down yet. But at the same time, I think I, he was just on my buddy's uh, show, Brandon Lowe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So yeah, me and Brandon Lowe, we we you know we want to do something, but it's just you know I'm, I'm building a business as well, and. They got me on Sundays. He's trying to get me on Fridays. I'm like, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have time to, to do well, it. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's the situation's a little different, but I feel your pain, man, because you 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 want to help out as much as you can, right. but you got to do you at the same time. Absolutely. And you can't you can't 
grinding eight days a week. I mean, right. you just can't do it. Can't do it. And you, 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 you got kids. I mm-hmm. mean, you, you got to have that beat in there. And you know, some people get it, some people don't. They just you know, right. uh, there's. You know, when I first started talking to you, I was thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if I could uh, maybe get him to come up and be on the show. And then I got to think about it. I was like, well, man, he got this going on. Right. And he got that going on. So I was like, well, I'll just get him when I can. You know? mm-hmm. And I understand that, man, because it, it's 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 hard work. And I can't tell you how many friends, sadly, I've lost, they've on through the years of, of me pursuing my dream, mm-hmm. pursuing my business, because they they take it as I'm being stuck up. I don't know, maybe, mm-hmm. but it, that's not the case. I mean, I'm sure you could ask for it. It's just it's, it's constant grind. I can't, you know. Yeah, I'd like to lay up for two weeks and do nothing and just mm-hmm. hang out and you know drink some beers and watch TV and all this and that. But you can't. I mean, if you want to keep moving, you got to keep moving. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, I, I completely concur. I mean, it, it's it's the whole thing. It's Especially in in business where you you're involved with people, like my business, where I'm I'm in I'm in the business where I, I need people. I, I need to be around people. I need to talk to people. And once I, <clears throat> once I stop talking to people, when I'm sitting here, you know, doing something that's not geared towards my business, it's like I'm I'm losing I'm losing time with my business. So um, and, and again, you lose you lose friends. But I, I look at it like they really wasn't your friends. No, if, no. If if they no. if they're going to you know, not talk to you because you're pursuing your business or you ask them to, to help you out in your business, you know, they, they're, they're not necessarily, I can't say they're not your friends, but those those are people that, that are, are, are fair-weather friends. They want they want to be there when it's good for them. Well, my stepdad told me when I was younger that I could probably count on one hand mm-hmm. my true friends right, my absolutely. whole life. And, you know, I was at the time, I'm, man, I got all kind of friends. You know what you're talking about. You know, but now that I'm uh, twenty years old, and, yeah. um, I'm starting to see that. You know what right. I mean? And I'm like, guys, I love you, but you know, I gotta, I gotta do me. I mean, I yeah. got, you know, I got kids to feed, and this is my passion. This is right. this is what I do. We we boys. I'll catch up with you. It might be three or four months down the line. But we'll catch up. Yeah, we'll catch up. We'll you follow know? up. It's, that, it's just not gonna be, you know, what, what you expect all the time. Can't be playing every week, man. Right. I, I gotta, I gotta get ready for the game. You know? Got stuff to do. Well, Avon, that's pretty much all I got, man. I appreciate you coming on. No being problem. With Thanks for having me, man. Hopefully we can get you on later on this year. Uh, while I got you on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. Um, Big 12 got us finishing sixth mm-hmm. in Morgantown this year. You think that's accurate? I don't know, to be honest I'll with you. I'll wait and see. I can't. You know, I can't. Because I, I, I haven't really followed it enough to, to actually give an accurate – Opinion on it, I can't say that wrong. I can't say you just right. be a homer, be like, oh no, they're going to be number one. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I don't know. I all would right, love right, for them to right. be number I one. I made a little easier. Are we going to beat Tech on the third? Um, I don't know. They probably should think about beating. Oh, Tech, Virginia yeah, Tech. Virginia I thought tech. you meant Texas Tech. All right, what uh, about Texas Tech? Yeah. Are they, 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 Are they going to be Virginia Tech? I, I hope so. That's the plan. You know what I mean? That it, it's funny, man. When when you you just have bad days after they lose, <laughs> like. It's, it's it's in me to to for us to win. Like right. it feels like I play a game when we play, even though I don't physically play. Right, I'm mentally my little girl. In that my game. little girl cracks up at me because I'm a, I'm a wee guy. Right. Know, even though I've never played on the team, I'm a wee <laughs> guy. You know, we got a game this weekend. Right, my little girl be like. You don't play on a team, man. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. I'm in the stands. I'm the twelfth man. That right, on. right, right. <laughs> but uh. But, yeah, man, I'll, I'll let you get out of here, brother. But, like I said, it was great having you on. Hopefully we'll get you on again. No doubt, man. appreciate you having me. Man. Um, guys, regular season starts here soon, and we'll be back with the rest of the crew, Jack and Mikey, and maybe even a few surprises. Till next time, Ramble fans, ramble on.